Hello and welcome again to the CertainTeed Right Way to Insulate training workshop. Today, we'll show you how to insulate a home with the blow-in blanket system, BIBS for short, using Optima. First of all, before you view this video, it is essential that you study the right way video on blowing attics so you understand the blowing machines and the safety information. And also be sure you're familiar with the right way video getting started both videos are basic training you'll need before you learn the system. Okay, ready for bibs? Bibs can be installed in several ways. This video is on bibs using Optima fiberglass blowing insulation blown behind Optima fabric, which you staple or glue to the studs. This creates a uniformly dense, firm insulation, a blanket of insulation that takes the shape of any cavity it fills. This uniform coverage means that BIBS offers exceptional sound insulation too. In fact, BIBS is considered the most effective standard insulating method available. It won't settle. Spaces are filled uniformly to a high R value, and the chances of gaps being left are less than with bats. Optima insulation does not require adhesive. It's blown dry, straight from the package. You'll need to allow more time to properly install a bibs job compared to using bats, and there are some new skills to learn. If you're experienced in blowing insulation, you're halfway there. It's important to wear the proper protective clothing, hard-soled sturdy shoes, long pants, gloves, a long-sleeved shirt, a cap, a disposable dust respirator, and protective eyewear with side shields. Be sure you have sufficient Optima fabric and Optima insulation on the truck for the day's work. You don't want to waste time going back for more before the job is finished. You'll also need unfaced bats for blockers and for insulating small spaces where the hose won't fit. Scraps from another job are fine. Don't forget a utility knife. You'll use it for cutting Optima fabric. Okay, let's begin the job. A good first step is to look for eaves that go to soffits. Install baffles, and then go around and put in blockers of unfaced insulation. You don't want to blow Optima behind the baffles and block the airflow. As we said, scraps from another job will do fine. Go around an entire room or two and cover the areas to be insulated with Optima fabric. There are two methods, gluing and stapling. If your supervisor prefers stapling, first, staple across the top plate using a bat hammer or a compressed air stapler. Staple closely, about every one and a half to two inches or less. Keep the fabric pulled tight. Run the fabric across the studs, pulling it tight and stapling as you go. Be sure to staple in the corners. Staple all around the perimeter of windows. And finally, staple across the bottom plate. Use these dotted lines as a guide for hanging the fabric straight from top to bottom. To glue, use drywall adhesive. First, staple the fabric across the top plate about every two feet. Keep the fabric pulled tight. Then apply the adhesive to the studs. This is the way to apply fabric to metal studs. Then, keeping the fabric tight, use a smoothing tool and bond the netting to the studs. Finally, glue the bottom plate. No matter which method you use, it's very important to end up with fabric that's tight across the stud cavities. If you leave any slack, the insulation will bulge out too far beyond the face of the studs. Now if this happens, the drywallers won't be able to lay their drywall flush against the studs. And that's a problem. You don't want to come back and do the job over. The next step is to cut holes in the fabric to fit the hose end. Generally, if you're using a short hose, you'll have to cut two holes per cavity, except for short walls where you can cut one hole. If you're using a longer hose, one hole per cavity is sufficient. You'll usually use a 3-inch or 4-inch diameter hose. 
cut the hole just about the diameter of the end of the hose. Most people find that one of these cuts works best for them. A 45 degree angle cut, an L or J cut, a T cut, or an X cut. Now you're ready to blow. In a normal size sidewall, insert the hose downward approximately two to three feet. The most effective way is to continuously move the hose back and forth until the cavity is completely filled, as you see here. Fill the bottom of the cavity, keeping the hose moving to fill the space completely and evenly. Then, turn the hose and fill the area above. Usually, one hole is enough in a cavity. However, if you're blowing 9 or 10 foot sidewalls, you'll probably need a second hole near the top. You'll probably need a ladder or stilts for this higher work, so to save time, do all the upper holes after you've finished the lower holes. It will take a little practice to handle the controls. You should work with your supervisor or an installer who's experienced with the equipment to learn how to operate the controls.